My name is Josh Egan. I'm a workshop supervisor here at the Autodesk Technology Center. I manage the wood shop and the laser cutting shop. Here at the Autodesk Technology Center, we use Tulip to monitor some of our analog machines. One example is the Woodshop dust collection system. We use a Tulip app that looks at the dust collector and tells us if the power is on and whether the bins are full. We have a sensor that monitors it and in the Woodshop itself, we have a light that will tell us if it's operational or if it needs to be changed out. Really excited to use the new Edge IO devices to monitor our analog machines. I'm really thrilled to hear that we will get a higher resolution on our data stream and be able to get much more insights into what's going on in those machines. With the Edge IO, we've added some exciting new analog capabilities, specifically current monitoring and vibration monitoring. And this allows you to use the Edge IO as an analog oscilloscope to view your machine data. So at Autodesk, we were testing using the Edge IO to monitor a CNC mill. And to do this, we were using both a vibration sensor and a current clamp. The vibration sensor on the chassis of the CNC mill and the current clamp was hooked up to the power supply. The Edge IO is designed specifically to work with these low-cost, off-the-shelf sensors. You can buy the sensor and plug it directly into the Edge IO. Node-RED is a low-code, open-source platform that is flow-based, and it allows you to easily connect devices and sensors to your Edge IO, and the Edge IO can then send data to the cloud. On this early version of Edge IO, we're using Node-RED so that we have Tulip-supplied library flows that you can simply drag and drop into Node-RED. And when you deploy, it will allow you to capture data, send data to Tulip, and visualize the data in Node-RED. With Edge.io, we're really excited to have these new analog capabilities to give you new ways to unlock insights into your machines. With the high-frequency sensor data from Edge.io through Node-RED, we generate frequency and time domain graphs that can visualize the machine's behavior in real time. Edge I.O. and all of the data that it collects give operators a live view at the machine's performance for machines and equipment that might otherwise not be connected. The data is very flexible. It can be used as you need it in the Tulip ecosystem. Now with machine learning capabilities deployed on the edge, we can train AI algorithms that use the live data to predict the state and health of the machine. For example, if a tool becomes worn or if an anomaly happens during the CNC machining process, the operator can be alerted automatically. We're excited for the democratization of training for new users with edge technology. We teach a lot of people here. The idea of machine learning helps us to better address the folks who don't have the same level of experience that we have. With the new Edge IO device, we will be able to detect machine anomalies, which will create a feedback loop that is great for our new users, and it will help them get past the learning curve that is pretty steep, getting them up to speed on the machines and using Tulip. Hi everyone, here we have the same app running that we had running at Autodesk that we were using to monitor a CNC mill for both the vibration, current, and anomalies. Now we're no longer at Autodesk, but I wanted to do a brief walkthrough of exactly how this app works and how we can get the data from the Edge IO into a Tulip app. So since we're no longer at Autodesk, our setup's a little bit different. We are using the exact same two sensors, a current clamp that's measuring the current into a machine and a vibration sensor. Both of these sensors are off the shelf, easy sensors to plug directly into the Edge IO. But in this case, we're gonna be monitoring a compressor. So let's do a quick demo. I'm going to turn on the compressor. And I'll turn it back off. And here we can see that just as expected, the vibration sensor, which is attached to the compressor, reported higher vibration data when the compressor was on, and the current, which is monitoring the current going into the power of the compressor, 
also went up when we turned it on. If you noticed, the machine state also changed to running instead of stopped. Now let's do a walkthrough of how exactly turning on the compressor turned into all of these things happening in this app. We'll walk backwards and first look at the app. So in this app, we can see the vibration and current attribute widgets. These widgets are simple drag and drop toolet supplied widgets where all you have to do in Tulip is drop them into your app, select which machine you want to show data for, and then select which attribute to show data for. Uh, these other widgets above are similar. You just select the machine and it will output the data for that machine. So in this case, let's take a look at the machines that are feeding these display widgets. So I'll go to my Tulip instance and take a look at the CNC machine in my library which is what we're currently showing the data for. If we go to the configuration, we can see that we have attributes in the machine, specifically anomaly, current, and vibration. In this case, current and vibration are the two attributes that we see here. Similarly, if we look at the type for this machine, so in this case, anomaly detection machine, we can go ahead and look at how the state is getting set. So in this state trigger, we can see that whenever the machine outputs an anomaly, we set the machine state to anomaly. And whenever we output various current values, we set the machine state to other things. So for example, a current of less than 0.2 amps means stopped. A current value of greater than 1.5 amps will set the state to running. And anything else will set the state to idle. So here in this machine timeline widget, these states of running, anomaly, and stopped were based on either there being an anomaly output or the current values reporting on or off for the machine. Now that we know how the state's getting set and how the attributes are displaying in the app, let's see where this data is actually coming from. Let's go to the edge IO that we have the sensors attached to. In this case, this edge IO. We'll open the portal and what we're going to look at specifically is Node-RED. Node-RED is a low-code flow-based software that we're excited to be running on our new Edge.io hardware. Here, let's take a look at the flows that we have running on this device. So in this flow, we're sending sensor data to Tulip. We have these custom Tulip Node-RED nodes that are reading data from, in this case, the differential ADC for the current sensor, and in this case, the current source ADC for the vibration sensor. We're then doing some data processing on the data to transform the analog data into exactly what we want to send to Tulip. And then we're lastly sending the data to Tulip. So the only configuration that needs to be done here, let's see for the current. We just need to put the endpoint info for the current attribute into this node. So this device info here, this like copy paste JSON value, comes from, if we go back and look at the CNC machine, comes from the current attribute. So you would just copy paste this device info into the node red flow here. And then it's the same thing for vibration. You would copy paste this vibration attribute device info into the node red node that specifies where to send the vibration data to. So now we see how we're getting sensor data and sending it to Tulip. I just want to point out that while some of these flows are customly developed and you can make fit your exact needs, we also have simple drag and drop flows that you can out of the box run in Node-RED to work on your Edge IO device. So for example, this other flow, ADC oscilloscopes, all that you have to do to import this flow is navigate to the hamburger menu, select import, library, tulip library. And then here you'll see the analog oscilloscopes.json flow file. This is a Tulip provided library flow that when you import will appear and will run on your device. So let's take a look at exactly what this flow does. For example, in the first part of this flow, we're plotting the differential ADC data directly at the URL scope time. So locally on your Edge IO, you can add the URL scope time to your Node-RED instance and you'll be able to see the analog data from the differential ADC getting plotted live. So let's go ahead and turn on the compressor and back off. 
And here we can see that we can see the live data coming in from the current into the compressor. So this is pretty cool. We're really excited to have Node-RED so that you guys can both develop your own applications, but also have out of the box tulip applications that help you hook up low cost off the shelf sensors to your tulip instance to help you monitor your machines and gain more visibility into them. We're really excited for new features coming up like anomaly detection, which you got a preview of at Autodesk. I hope that this gave some insight into how we're getting the data from the Edge IO into Node-RED, and then lastly, into your Tulip instance, and we're excited to see what you do with your Edge IO. Thanks.